Hey guys, so what am I working on now? Well, I got this Toyota Sienna in here and customers complaining of a noise and an, they want an oil change. So the noise is very obvious. I don't know what it is yet, but we're about to find out. Uh, let's start it up and let's see if we can't figure it out. When I'm under the hood, the noise is quite loud. So I'm gonna probably shut it off on a couple of times and then try to, maybe, I don't even know. Let, let me start it up. You listen to this noise. Let's get the hood open. It's going to be so loud you may not be able to hear anything I'm saying. So let's go from there. That is uh, quite the loud noise. set my hood prop in place now I've showed you this trick before taking a long screwdriver and then you put it down onto the accessories to try to find the noise because that's a belt driven noise Basically what I'm doing is I have this going down to the alternator down there, which I know you can't see that. Now, I'm sticking a screwdriver up to my ear. It sounds like the alternator, so I'm pretty confident. I'm going to take the belt off and see where we wind up there. Um, take the belt off and spin the alternator by hand and see what it does. Word of caution. When you're doing that, sticking it up to your ear, and you're trying to hear it for a noise, be very careful, be mindful of what you're doing. I've seen somebody actually underneath the car and they stuck it in, the flywheel wasn't covered, the car was running, and they actually hit the flywheel. And what happened was the thing bounced back, hit them dead in the ear, knocked them unconscious. Uh, they had to go to the hospital, uh, they wound up with a concussion, so it was not a pretty sight. So anyway, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm actually gonna pop the belt off, and I'm gonna spin that alternator by hand, these things have a clutch in the front of the alternator, or like a one-way type clutch. And it almost sounds like that clutch could be shot. It's nothing, nothing will move right now, but that's almost what it sounds like. So let me see about taking tension off and getting that belt off and see if I can't spin that by hand and see what it does. All right, so I got the belt untensioned. I got this wrench down there, I got it zip tied to that mount because I wanted to show you this. So now the belt is actually loose on the pulley there. And let's see if you can see this. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's shot. So, looks like we're going to be putting it in an alternator. These are a little bit of a pain if I remember correctly. They're just a little tight. So, I gotta look them up and see what's actually involved. I don't recall off the top of my head. But look down here. I mean, obviously the belt has to come off, but uh, I think if you just take this bottle out, I think you have enough room to sneak it out from in there. I don't recall off the top of my head. Was I showing you that? I don't know. But yeah, this bottle has to come out. I think you may just be able to snake it through here. I just don't recall off the top of my head. Maybe you got to take these tranny cooler lines. It's weird that tranny cooler lines run up top like this on these. But I think once that's out of the way, I think the thing will come up and out this way. So I just looked it up to get this alternator out. What they want you to do, and I'm not kidding, and I hope I don't have to do this. I don't recall ever having to do this. They want you to pull the entire bumper cover off, pull the headlight out, 
pull the radiator support out, pull the radiator out, pull all the hoses off, and this thing's supposed to come out through here. Uh, I don't think so. I could see possibly taking that hose off and losing coolant. I don't know about all, everything else there. I, I think I might have to take the tranny cooler lines out, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try to do this as minimalistic as possible. I know i got to pull the right front wheel off, i got to pull the shield out and everything else from underneath. But, I mean, to me, that's just insanity pulling all of that out. Why do I got to pull the headlight out? But, yeah, that's what the steps are calling for, and I'm like, come on, let's get real here. So we got the battery disconnected. I took the radiator cap off because I'm thinking I'm going to pull this upper hose off. Like I said, I'm going to try to do this as simple as possible. I had already popped the belt off. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can just see that. Uh, yeah, that could just be the pulley itself because these pulleys are a clutch. So let me pop that hose off and then let's see what's involved in doing that because I want to take as little apart as possible. The fact that they're telling me to pull the nose off, I mean, to me, that's just insanity. So let's, uh, let's get that hose off and see what we got. And there you go. The hose is off. So now... I think what I'm going to do is I've got to disconnect the wiring harness underneath it. Here is the main battery harness. That's a 10 millimeter. Then you got this plug here. And then it should just be two bolts. I'm going to look at the new alternator just to verify that it is only two bolts. And then I see if that thing can't come out of here somehow. Like I said, I may have to take the tranny cooler lines off to gain a little more access. But let's find out. So there we go. I have the bolts out. There's one bolt here, one bolt down there. Really not a big deal. One plug, one... Uh, positive post there. I took the engine cover off so this way I can move the harness over. So let's see, this should come free. Let's find out. I could be wrong. May not be ready to come free. There's not a back bracket right now. I just looked at the other, at the new alternator. Sometimes you gotta look at that. Something's holding this. Not quite sure what. I'm going to try to get in there and get this thing motivated to come out of there. All right, so this thing's got one nightmare bolt that I, I, I didn't realize that it had. I remember this from another Toyota, which really made me dislike it. But let's, let me see if I can show it to you. This is probably the reason they want you to take everything apart. Let me see if I can't shine a light up here. But that's the AC compressor. And if you look, let's see. Can I show you? I may not be able to show you. Hold on a second. You can actually just see the edge of the bracket. Right there. See that silver thing? It's right there. That's the edge of the bracket. It's got that, and then there's another end to it. All the way up at the top inside. So they look like 10 millimeters. That may be an MDI, which means mechanic delete item. So we're gonna find out in a second. Because I don't, I don't even understand the reasoning for it. It's, it's little, basically there's six millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter head is what it looks like. What is that really for? I mean, what's that gonna support? It's got two massive bolts holding it in place. So what's the point of that little tiny bracket with these little tiny bolts? I'm not gonna be able to film this, no way. So let me see if I can't get up there and get that bracket unbolted and see what happens and I'll, I'll once i get it out if it's really minimal minuscule then it's going to become an mdi mechanic delete item i did get the bolt out it fell of course because it's in such a tight spot so now let me let this thing down the alternator should come right out and i'm going to just take that bracket out it really yeah it's there for a reason but honestly it's not going to really have any effect on anything it, to me, it's kind of a pointless bracket on, on this particular vehicle. It's such a small bolt, and I got it loose with a quarter-inch drive. I mean, okay. Yeah, some kind of a support to the back of the alternator, but have, I don't know. Anyway, so let me, I'm letting it down. Let me get this thing out. All right, I'm going to keep the light off on, on the camera itself. Let's just see how this comes out. What did I do with my little pry bar that I had? See that? No, it basically comes right out. 
So now, can I get it out of the vehicle? Well, it's loose in there, but I don't think I have enough room to get it out. It's hitting AC lines and stuff. And all sorts of stuff, stuff, stuff. So it's not going to pass through there. I'm going to have to take the fans out and whatnot. Fans out and these tranny cooler lines. So let me work on that. All right, so really all I did was I took the clips out of the top here. There's a screw down here, a screw up here, same thing on the other side. I took them out so this way this whole upper support can move. I didn't want to take the hood latch and all that other stuff out. But with that out of the way, I could move the radiator forward. And there, it's out. So now, what happened, remember, I think I said in the beginning of this, how these things have a one-way clutch? And that's exactly what failed, the one-way clutch. There's probably nothing actually wrong with the alternator itself. But that's, that's part of the one-way clutch. It's like a sprag, I think. Uh, but yeah, so let me get that bracket off down there you can see here's the bolt that fell it's just kind of a stupid and, and it's even loose i didn't loosen that it's even loose so that thing's coming out mdi all right let me get that out of the way let me get the new one and stick that in place so let's get this in place so now it should just go down this whole thing able to come forward. I should be able to tuck it. Yeah, this is the way I got it out. It's a little tight, but there it goes. All right. And you just got to make sure you don't pinch the wiring in between the AC compressor. You want to get the bottom tucked up. Like that. And then just make sure you're in the right spot as you're going back in. And like that. So now, I always like to put a dash of WD-40 on my bolts as it's going back together. Makes your life a little bit easier. This alternator is a, one of the more difficult ones, I will say that. I mean, it's not out of control. I mean, I've done worse. But it's definitely not, it's definitely not an easy one by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, let's see. This bolt's going be a little bit of a pop in the butt. That bolt is caught now down there. Let me show you the bolts. So the top one is the one that adjusts the alternator to the vehicle. That threaded collar slides in. So when you tighten up the bolt, it's going to pull that collar in. The bottom bolt just sits. There you go. That just sits in place. So let me get everything tightened up and basically, like I always say, reverse procedure to install. So there shouldn't be too much special going on here. I'm going to change the belt, which that's a little bit of a hop in the butt too. So, but you do that from inside here. All right, let's get this going. Just wanted to show you this while I'm tightening this up. As you can see, the alternator is still loose, but pay attention to this end there. That's the threaded end. You should start seeing it move in. And now the alternator tightens up. So there we go. Now it's tightened in place. Like I said, that sets where the alternator actually sits, so the belt should be lined up at that point. So now let me tighten up the other one, and like I said, reverse procedure to install. 
one thing I forgot about, <clears throat> this old alternator has this stud on it, and this stud is for a wiring harness to clip into. Basically, I'm just going to transfer this over to the other one. The end of this is just an inverted Torx. That's all it is. There, the stud is in place on the new alternator. And you just put the clip in there and it holds the harness in place. So I'm going to get the rest of this together. Well, I can honestly tell you, that is a not easy belt. I don't know how I would have even thought to show you how to do that. That is just not an easy belt. Uh, yeah, so, but I think it's on. What you always want to make sure is always double check your belt. Make sure it's on in all the grooves in the correct orientation. So you're not off by one groove, you know, possibly hanging out over something. I think it's correct. Well, let me put it up in the air and double check. But yeah, that's not an easy belt whatsoever. I mean, it appears I got everything in the right spot, but I mean, I, I always found this ridiculous. I've seen this before. I, I don't think I've ever done a belt on one of these, but I've done it on a Camry. And if you look, the belt, the grooved part on the top goes to the top of the water pump and the grooved part on the bottom section goes to the bottom of the water pump. It doesn't wrap around the water pump. It goes in two different sections. So it's just, see it? It's just, that's an odd, it's odd setup. And I don't know why they did it that way, but yeah. All right. I mean, it looks like everything's in place. It looks like it's in all the grooves correctly. So let me put the cover on and let me get the wheel on and let's button this up. So that's all done. I got the hose back on. I put a new clamp on. I hate those squeezy clamps. Uh, let's see. The AC line is back in place. The cover is back on. I got my DVOM because I'm going to double check and just verify that that, that alternator is charging. Uh, even though we didn't have an alternator charging issue, we had an alternator problem. I replaced it. I just want to make sure it's charging. So with that being said, let's start it up. Oof, okay, I changed the oil too. That's a clattery motor, boy. Alright, so that alternator is nice and quiet now. Wow, that thing, the chains were noisy in this thing. Woo! Alright, so let's put this thing to voltage. I hook up negative right there. Positive there. 1436, charging perfectly fine. All right, so I'm happy with that. Set that off. Wow, those chains are noisy. <laughs> All right, let me put this DVOM away. All right, so that's pretty much it. So as you see, that's what you need to do to diagnose a noise sometimes. Sometimes it's very obvious. That one, I kind of thought that's where it was coming from, but, you know, the screwdriver to the ear trick those work you can get a stethoscope or whatever get them on amazon ebay you can get them from uh, uh harbor freight so like i said if you're going to use the screwdriver to the ear just be careful i have seen somebody got seriously hurt from it so uh but yeah that's about it charging everything's good I'm just i can't believe how noisy that motor was when i started it Whew. anyway all right so that's pretty much it if you get something out of my videos hit that like button if you could please subscribe all right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.